what is going on guys time stopper here coming back at you with another raid shadow legends video guys in this video we are going to be talking about how you can best build kale for your free to play or even low spend account here in raid shadow legends now kale is going to be one of the starter champions and he is arguably the best one that you could pick of the four starters so we're going to be talking about what are some ideas for builds that you can use like what types of artifacts and accessories and things like that do you need to put on kale so that you can be successful so let's jump into the video okay guys so first and foremost when you're first starting out the game, hopefully you have picked Kale. At the very beginning in the tutorial, it does give you an option to pick one of four starter champions. And arguably, Kale is the best all-around champion because he brings a little bit of everything. Now, I'm not going to get too in the weeds here, and I'm going to try to keep this high level because I've seen a lot of Kale build guides that quite honestly, are just way too difficult to follow for a beginner player or someone who isn't super familiar with the game. You know, I have an end game account and I would build Kale much differently for that account than I would expect anyone to build him for a beginner account, someone that's just starting out, someone that's free to play. And that's really what I want to cover here in this video. Ignore the fact that on the screen you see that it says that I get Rhonda after logging in for seven days before February 28th. If you're watching this anytime in the future, you may not be getting her. That's not why this is up here. When you first start playing the game, you are, everyone is going to be given one full set, as you can see right here, of life steal gear. Now, the reason that's important is because when you first start out this game, Kale is going to be an all-around champion. You're going to use him in a lot of different areas of the game. So you need someone who can basically heal themselves without you having to have other champions involved in case you haven't yet gotten those. And the lifesteal set is going to allow him to regenerate health based on the damage that he does throughout the different areas of the game. So you don't have to worry about having a healer or a reviver along with him. So you are going to be using one set of this gear. Now, this does give you six pieces when you first start out. Lifesteal is a set that only requires four pieces for it to do its job. So we don't have to worry about using all six pieces. We're only going to be using four, but you're always going to get these by logging in for the first six days, no matter what you do. So I wanted to bring this up and so that you guys can see it here because this is what you're going to be using for your kale build. Now we're going to be jumping over to another one of my accounts that is a little bit higher level. It's account level 58, I believe, right now. So I can kind of show you what a Kale build guide should look like without you having to wait for me to play this account for six days. So through the magic of editing, I will be right back with that account. Okay, so now that we're over here on my free-to-play account, now this account is pretty old at this point. Um, it was one of the first accounts that I had made uh, when I did my account referrals and things like that. And it's got some pretty OP champions on it but I don't really play it that much. It literally just kind of sits there. I ranked it up to level 50 at one point, and then every now and then I'll just decide that I'm going to play a little bit on it. So I haven't really done any like gear farming or anything like that, and that's why I wanted to use this account as an example of how to build Kale for your free-to-play account so that you don't get misillusioned by all this great gear and everything like that you see everybody have when they do these Kale guides, and you can't get anywhere near those stats. As I mentioned, you're going to use your lifesteal set so if we take a look at my kale build here you can see that i have four pieces of lifesteal gear on kale so as i mentioned we're going to build this kale as kind of like an all-arounder type kale so what i mean by that is he's going to be able to be used everywhere in the game so as you get further into the game you will specialize your champions and maybe use them in just one area maybe only in arena maybe only in campaign only in clan boss or what have you but this kale is designed to kind of be an all-arounder for an early game player this is not like an end game guide for kale heck i don't even know that i would consider it a mid game guide for kale to be quite honest with you this is like just what you're going to find now yes you're going to be like well but you have some six star legendary relentless gear on there but you can actually get this really 
really early in the game because there's some starter tournaments and things like that that you can use. Again, your goal is to build him to the best of your ability. I built him some realistic stats, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you're going to build him. So first and foremost, you do need four pieces of life steel gear. That's the most important part. The reason is, is that when we get four pieces of life steel set, we're going to get 30% healing by the damage that is dealt. So anytime he does damage, he's going to automatically heal himself back up. This is going to make it so that he can farm campaign, so he can last longer in the clan boss and things like that. Now, because this is an all-arounder Kale, it's going to be that you have to build him to several different stats when we're looking at how we're going to build him. So ideally, when we look at our Kale, we're going to build him so that he's anywhere between about 150 to 190 speed, whatever's realistic based on the gear that you have at the time. The other things that you're going to want to focus on when you're building this Kale is you're going to want to make sure that you are at 100% crit rate. What that means is that anytime he hits something, he's going to crit, which means he does additional damage to the enemy. Again, that's going to make it so that he can heal better with that lifesteal set. So we want to make sure that we're at 100% crit rate. Now, if you are pretty savvy at the game, you may go over here and read on his skill kit that he gets an extra 15% chance of inflicting a critical hit on this main skill whenever he does it. The reason that we're still going to build Kale to 100% is because that is only on that skill. So on his A1, he does not get that extra 15% chance. On his A3 skill, he does not get that extra 15% chance. So we want to make sure that he is critting on every single hit. The only way we can do that is to build him to 100% crit rate. The other thing that we're going to do when we're looking at building Kale, if we look at his skill set here, you can see on his A1, he places the small version of Poison, which is a debuff. So for any time you're going to negatively affect the enemy, you need accuracy on your champion. So he has a poison on his A1. He also has the big version of poison on his A3. So we want to make sure that we're building him with some accuracy. Now, how much accuracy? Well, depending on where you're at in the game, ideally you want 10 accuracy for every level of dungeon. So if you're doing a level 10 dungeon, like Dragon or something like that, you're going to want 100 accuracy on your champion. If you're doing Clan Boss, I'm going to throw a guide up here on the screen now that's going to show you the different levels of Clan Boss and how much accuracy you're going to want to have on your champions so you can make sure you land your debuffs on the Clan Boss. And then for Campaign, it doesn't really matter. We're just looking to do raw damage. So that doesn't really matter much. So when we look at our Kale build, again, we're building to 100% crit rate here. And then we're going to build them to the accuracy that we want. Now, I have trash accuracy gear, so I can only build them to about 75% or 75 accuracy, which is fine for the content that I want him to be able to do in the game right now. And then after that, I literally just put as much damage on him as I could. So I got to 3,200 attack and 140 crit damage. Now, again, I'm building him to some realistic numbers for you. This is not the best Kale in the world, not even remotely close, right? What we did was we went out and we found our four pieces of lifesteal gear. We just have two. They both just happen to be relentless pieces, but we found two random pieces that we got to those stats. It doesn't really matter much beyond that. Now, most of the time, in order to get Kale to those stats, you're going to want to make sure that you have speed boots on him. You're going to make sure that you probably are going to have crit rate gloves on him. As you get later in the game, of course, you'll be able to get crit damage gloves, but at this point, you're not going to get enough stats elsewhere to do that. So we have crit rate gloves on him. We do have an attack chest on him that has some crit damage on it. As for his accessories, once you get your Kale to level 60, you're going to be able to put a ring, an amulet, and a banner on him. So in this case, we just have a defense ring. Why do I have a defense ring, you ask? Well, even though I have all these other rings that I could choose from, this is a reaction ring, which means that if I end up losing the speed race in arena, I give myself a little bit extra chance to survive, so I don't really care about what those stats are at this point. We did give him a crit damage amulet. Couldn't find any accuracy on there. Ideally, you would want accuracy on there if you could get it. But again, in the early game, sometimes you're just lucky to get an amulet. You can see I have 580 pieces of gear that I farmed. Actually, I, I farmed closer to 700 pieces of gear, and of that, if we look how many crit damage necklaces for Dark Elves we have, we have one, and it's on him. So 
Sometimes beggars can't be choosy. You got to give them whatever you can, right? Ideally, maybe you have an accuracy banner for him. Again, I couldn't get an accuracy banner, so I just gave him an attack banner. You're going to give him whatever you can to get to those stats. Are there more ideal pieces for him? Oh yeah, 100%. But this is a free-to-play guide for early game. We're just going to build him so we can be the most effective we can possibly be. Now, what should he look like with his masteries? Well, again, my Kale is an all-arounder Kale. Are there better mastery builds for Kale? Yes. If you're going to make him do clan boss or if he's only going to be doing campaign or he's only going to be doing dungeons. But these are the masteries that I recommend if you're going to be using him as an all-arounder. So we went ahead and we picked up the extra accuracy from the support tree. We went with Evil Eye to decrease the champion's turn meter when he gets hit with their default skill. Why did we do that? Well, we're going to be using him in Arena. And while normally I would take Lore of Steel, I don't have any gear set this is going to benefit, so I don't really care much. We do have Master Hexer on him because we do want to increase the length of those poisons if we can. And then over here, I'm going to take myself away. We went down the offense tree. We went a little bit unconventional we'll call it here right we picked up the crit rate we picked up the crit damage we got the extra damage when attacking with full hp we did take life drinker again we're going to be using him in clan boss we're going to be using him in campaign we need him to heal now a lot of times you'll be thinking well i should go single out well why did i not take single out i didn't take single out because he's an all-arounder and i want him for campaign and i want him to go fast so i can increase speed by six for each enemy killed by this champion up to 18. So if I'm killing enemies in campaign or if I'm killing enemies with him in dungeons, I'm going to automatically get some extra speed out of him. I want to pick up that whirlwind of death. I got bring it down. We have the wrath of the slain. Again, increased damage inflicted by 5% for each dead ally because I'm going to be using him in campaign. I want to get that extra damage from when my food champions die. I went ahead and went all the way down over here to war master. Now, normally a damage dealer, like a pure damage dealer, you might think, well, I'll go Helm Smasher. But again, I'm using this guy in clan boss. I'm using him in campaign. I'm using him in dungeons. So I want him to be effective in all those areas. And as you can see, if we look at how we built this out, we can pretty much use him almost anywhere, right? So if we go ahead and refresh, we take a look, we can find almost any team, right? Let me see if I can find a team here that has a couple legendary champions on it. Here's one, has a couple legendary champions on it. I've got my Deacon Armstrong in there, which hopefully you got from the promo code. I've got my Kale. I got my pay to win Rotos in there. Hey, I mean, come on. If you pulled Rotos, you'd be using Rotos too. We got our Vogoth in there for some extra healing. We're just gonna start this thing on auto. We're gonna go in there. Deacon's gonna hopefully drop defense for us. Kale's gonna go, he's gonna nuke him down. Boom, just like that, super easy. So I'm able to use him as my nuker in Arena because we built him to 100% crit rate and we gave him crit damage. Well, you're going to ask, okay, so what about can we use him in dungeons? Sure, why not? Early game, you're going to spend a lot of time in dungeons, right? So let's say I'm farming down here stage 10. I mean, this is kind of ridiculous, right? But if I'm farming down here in stage 10, I have Kale built. So he's going to be able to do damage on these waves. He's going to knock out the waves effectively for me. He's going to make sure that he's healing himself up as we go through here because he has that life steal set on. And then when we get to the dragon, remember, we made sure that we gave him enough accuracy for him to be able to land his poisons. So the best way to kill the dragon, land poisons. So we already have Kale set up. You can see there he did his A1, dropped some poisons on the dragon. Super easy. Now, I know you're going to say this is a super low level, whatever, etc. It is, but I only have him built with so much accuracy. I don't need to be farming the highest level possible right now. Honestly, I probably shouldn't be farming dungeons at all with this guy, but that's another your earner there. And of course, then we can go over to the clan boss if we want to. Whoops. Okay. We go over to the clan boss. We can see if we put him in, uh, let's see, I'm just in some random clan. It doesn't look like we've unlocked hard. We can go in here to normal. We've got our clan boss set up in here again. We've got our ninja. I know he's not available for newer accounts, whatever. It is what it is. But as you can see, my Kale is going to be landing his poisons in here without a problem. So he's going to be taking on that clan boss. No issues whatsoever. You can see we already got a big version of poison landed there as well. So again, 
I'm just going to back out of this. Obviously, you wouldn't normally want to do that. But I just wanted to show he obviously can land his stuff in the clam boss as well. So when you're looking to build out your kale for your account, again, the things that you're going to want to make sure you have, you're going to want to make sure you got four pieces of lifesteal. You get four, you get six pieces of lifesteal in the first six days you log in. I don't care what they are. When you get to four days, use the four pieces that it has and then add additional stuff in there. As you go through this, you're going to slowly get your kale better and better and better. You're going to use kale pretty far through the game for the most part. Some people are using kale even in the end game. So don't sleep on kale. I just wanted to quickly go through how you should be building out your kale so that you can be successful in 2023 and beyond with him as a free to play, low spend player. So that you're not out there trying to buy all kinds of stuff. Don't worry about all these other champions. This is how you're going to be looking at your kale. You want to be 100% crit rate. You want to have accuracy to land the poisons for the levels that you're fighting and then as much attack and as much crit damage as you can possibly get. Don't worry about looking at all these other people's kales and they're all cracked out of their mind with 6,000 attack and 250 crit damage and you're thinking to yourself, I can't get there. I understand. That's why I'm showing you this now. If you do have any questions though, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I do want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. Of course, as always, if you did like the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a thumbs up, and of course, as always, until next time, be good.